What's up guys and welcome back for another EVE Online solo mining episode. I'm going to be going out today and doing some Orca mining with the drones because that's kind of the mood that I'm in. Alright, first things first, we're going to go ahead and get out to belt. Get everything all set up. We have no pirate stronghold in system today, which is why I'm going to come out here and do some of this mining today. So I'm hoping we'll get quite a bit of stuff accomplished and... We're not really going to be too picky about what we grab. Probably just get a little bit of everything. Put a, a drone on each rock and just try to get as much done as possible. Alright, we got everything set up. Got drones on rocks. And we're just going to be mining everything that is in close range first. And just kind of go down the list as possible. Try to get as much done today burn some of that good old heavy water i'll probably be <clears throat> keeping the compressed ore in the ore hold until we kind of start running out of space then we'll uh move into the fleet hangar but one of my big goals is actually to kind of free up the heavy water that is in my fleet hangar and i want to use up about twenty thousand heavy water in drone mining and then probably in the next couple days, I will bring out two hulks with this orca and we'll do some fleet mining with those guys. I'm always looking for ways to convert or opportunities to convert this heavy water into ore. And I think this will be a good opportunity. I am using augments today. I decided to, you know, bring out the bling a little bit. Let's go ahead and look at the yield for these guys we're looking at about 234 cubic meters every minute per drone so we're going to be over a thousand cubic meters per minute which is just fine because we're essentially kind of afking not really afking but i guess in the background mining as you could say while we're doing other stuff we'll be starting on this little corner right here of the asteroid belt and just like we have done in the past, we will move, keep moving around the arc as we start running out of range of stuff. Most likely, I will not mine anything that is greater than or equal to about 10 kilometers from the Orca to help with the drone's travel time and to keep some form of efficiency going. So as we start clearing everything out, in a 10k radius we will start moving down the line i like having my drone window over here next to my targets because it allows me to quickly kind of use the mine button and switch targets easily i feel like i'm always piddling with my ui for the most part but most of the time when i get it to where i like it it stays that way for uh, at least a year for the most part and then every so often I'll kind of reconfigure things based on my current needs. But I'm actually really kind of enjoying this current, this new setup that I've got going on here. It's I'm doing it to be as uh, spaciously conscious as possible. As far as other goals that we have going on for mining coming down the road, we are going to be looking at doing some moon mining. So look out for that in the next few days or so and then probably some spud main mining in Poshman we'll try to hit that up and most likely some null sec mining will be making its way to the series in forms of doing some mercoxis hopefully doing some higher quality moons and going out there and getting some of that Arknor Bistot and hopefully some uh null sec ice some of that pristine white glaze or some of that really nice null sec faction ice to add to our collection of compressed materials those are kind of a few things that i'm thinking of doing over the next week or so I'm kind of excited to just start adding more value to our item hold in terms of compressed ore collect everything at least a one of everything would be very very interesting this video will be a little bit more long form than 
normal and a, probably a little bit more live streamy kind of feeling. I'm going to try to leave the footage running as much as possible so you can kind of chill with me out here while we mine. We can uh, look at all the rocks disappearing together. One of the things I love about Nullsec mining and moon mining in general, especially in terms of fleet mining or drone mining, is the fact that the rocks are so big that we can essentially put all the drones or all of the mining lasers for our hulks on a single rock. And it makes doing large volume mining with big groups or with drones a lot easier. Like we did in our fleet mining video with the Orca and Four Hulks, I was changing targets a lot. And it was um, very mentally exhausting doing that for several hours. And when you're doing moon mining or Argnor Bistot or anything really large, it's a lot easier because you scan a rock, especially like ice. You scan a rock, well, ice, moon mining, Argnor Bistot, stuff like that. If you scan a rock and it has like 200,000 cubic meters in it, then you know that you can essentially put everything on that one rock and not have to really worry about reassigning any sort of uh, lasers or drones for a good amount of time, which leaves you a lot more time and mental capacity to watch local, watch D-scan, or uh, you know work on that project discovery that we uh, all love doing. Which uh, I have been uh, very lax on my product discovery lately. Overall, I would say over the course of the, the past 10 episodes or so, um, and that's kind of the time frame that we've been focusing on stockpiling and doing long form videos, I would say that we, I feel like we've done quite a bit. Um, not everything is uh, on, not everything that we've done is all in one place. I've got to do some consolidating in the next day or so, but I would say. Just based on what you guys have seen on camera, we've probably done about 400 million in compressed ore value. We'll know uh, a little bit better once we kind of get everything in one spot and one item hold and we can see the true value. But obviously we spent a lot of money too, getting alt ready with large skill injectors, buying ships, buying mods and everything. But we haven't lost any ships we haven't lost any assets, so I think we'll be doing fine. And uh, my goal really is to try to push to about five billion in compressed ore value. I think that would probably get us to the point where we're past what we've spent on ships, and in a really good spot to uh, to kind of be in the uh, the black, so to speak, even though. Isk is not really something that we're too concerned about, but a lot of people watching might be concerned about, for instance, this Orca being roughly $2 billion fitted, getting the money that you've invested back out of this, which isn't actually that difficult. If all you're doing is just Orca mining like this every day, you're not going to run into too many problems. I mean, not everybody mines in Kaldari space like I do, which some would consider Kaldari space being one of the more dangerous regions of high sec. And I really don't have any problems at all out here. So if you're in any other faction part of K space and you're doing this Orca mining every day, as long as you know and you're careful and you watch local and you look out for ne'er do wells, then I think you'll it'll only be a matter of time before you pay off your Orca. It's really going to come down to how often you get out there and if you're actually selling the, the ore itself or if you're doing manufacturing or anything like that. But for the most part, historically for me, I've never had a problem making my money back on my ships. It just takes a little bit longer because of the price of mining ships going up and the value of the ore going down. It, that time frame it tends to get a little bit longer during market drops and things, but I've never had a problem losing a ship and worrying about replacing it just from doing normal safe mining. At some point today I need to go out and buy a porpoise for the actually just for this 
for everybody to kind of use, to, uh, depending. There are some situations where drone mining in a porpoise would be pretty beneficial. I think the the Nomad alt, I guess we're calling that alt the Nomad at this point, she'll benefit a lot from using a porpoise for drone mining for a lot of the situations she kind of gets herself into. So that's on a shopping list. We already have Hulks, we already have Mackinaws, we have uh, Expeditionary Frigates, we have Orca. So for the most part, we're kind of good on assets as it goes right now. Uh, we might be buying some mod mods to um, have ice mining equipment for the other Hulks that we've got. We already have ice equipment for the Nomads, Mackinaw, but having access to the Hulks being ice mineable would be um, kind of beneficial. So that might be on the, the shopping list today as well because one of these next few days I want to take the um, two Hulks and the Orca out and really um, grab a ton of ice to bring uh, that part of our inventory up quite a bit and obviously we'll have Mercoxus mods to build when we get when we get ready to go to Nullsec actually um, that'll probably be the Nomad alt going out there and doing that since she's putting a lot of training time into modulated strip miners so she's got you know the ability to do moon mining with mods and we'll get her Arc Norbis dot stuff which I think no she can already do that actually so she'll have um the ability to you know use Mercoxus crystals and all that so most likely that character will you be the one we take out to null sec and everything which I might actually ship her out there with whatever equipment that is needed <clears throat> and then uh, we'll probably leave that those assets in place so she'll be still moving around and doing a lot of this normal stuff she's been doing already but we'll just basically have probably a jump clone out in null sec so on days that we need to do that kind of mining we'll I'll jump her out there via jump clones she'll do whatever mining she needs to do we'll stockpile that'll be kind of like a secondary um location for stockpiling ore and when it gets to a certain amount that's worth paying to get it freighted back to where we're mainly stockpiling stuff then we'll uh we'll kind of do that which is Kind of what I'm thinking in the back of my head. Just trying to get a little of everything. I've been trying to focus a lot on rare ore mining with her because that kind of fills that gap that we end up having when we do only like null sec and high sec mining. That isogen and noxium kind of gap. So right now she's focusing a lot on hunting down rare ores, which has been very, very successful. Um, very consistent actually. Now that I've kind of gotten into a routine with doing it. So in terms of having access to Isogen and Noxium and not mining at all in low sec, we are doing absolutely amazing in that department because I just think that doing pretty much anything other than PVP in low sec is kind of just a pain. And you know, there you, your time could be better spent, especially for PVE industry in other areas of space. But don't get me wrong, Losek is great for faction warfare and for PvP. It's just, for me, I don't have the patience to go out there and mine in something that is just going to give me a headache after so long. Here's a uh, good example of why I equip a improved cloaking device on an Orca. I just got back from being AFK and I get less downtime when I do this than as a, like if I went up and docked. And then came back, I had to fly back out, kind of worry about that whole like time frame for warping and stuff. But normally what I do here is I'll just suck all the drones in, turn off the industrial core, and then just cloak. I usually keep myself about 2,500 meters plus away from any rocks. So if I do have to kind of get out of or get up from the computer or whatever, I'm able to just quickly cloak up. And then getting set back up is just turning off cloak and then just waiting for the uh, target delay from the cloak to expire and then get the drones back out and get everything kind of moving again. This is another trick I use in uh, null sec as well. Whenever a nuke comes in system, I'll, you know, I'm usually not sieged in an orca in null sec, 
most of the time because doing this strategy is very, very beneficial out there. But essentially, I will, um, if a nuke comes in system, then I'll just bring the drones in, cloak up, wait for them to leave because they won't see me on D-scan. If they come to the belt, they won't see me if I do it fast enough. And yeah. Probably one of the, the better uses of a cloak. I thought about actually <clears throat> allocating one of the Hulk alts that I have stationed out here with this Orca as my null sec tune as well. Then we would effectively have we would effectively have a mining tune in high sec and in null sec and then one that can just kind of move around between like Poshman and low sec and do rare ore stuff. I think that'd be a pretty interesting setup, but I, I do kind of like having two Hulk alts kind of on reserve for this guy because whenever we go do ice, we can get a lot of ice with uh, two Hulks being boosted by the Orca. I don't know. I'm still trying to decide how I eventually want the entire infrastructure to be set up. We'll probably end up actually getting a... I'll probably be actually making a new alt uh, and making it a uh, making another jump freighter pilot essentially to help move stuff around as well. It kind of just depends on how much we're going to be doing manufacturing wise and where we're going to be doing it at. This is definitely the bulk of what my mining day kind of looks like because rare ore sites are not that big. So normally when I log in and I see a or I find a rare ore site, it doesn't take me all that long to kind of mow that down with the Mackinac and just like with Mercoxus and Nullsec or you know anything like that it tends to not be that kind of a long of a process the bigger I guess the longer duration mining sessions end up being the uh, high sec mining with the Orca whether it be drones or with the Hulks and then doing like ice mining whether it be in Nullsec or in high sec but this is um yeah, this is basically a really good indication of how I spend most of my time mining. I haven't been able to do a lot of mining this week just because I've been working on Diablo 4 content. Or not content, but I've been just playing that game quite a bit. So once I actually get to kind of a, um, a nice equilibrium there, I'll be uh, kind of turning up the heat again on this operation and get back to where we were not really back to where we were we've actually been kind of we're doing more actually now than when we were when we started it's just I'm also in addition doing other things outside of of Eve I think my one of my goals is to be um, by the end of by the end of this month having at least a couple of billion in compressed ore value. I think if we can get that by the end of June, then that will give us enough to really start kind of exploring the manufacturing side of things. And I've been debating too on whether or not to actually do an entirely new series on manufacturing or tie it into the solo mining series because a lot of what we'll be doing at that point is still mining related in terms of going out and finding materials, re reprocessing what we need to build something. And then once we start that job, it's essentially just kind of waiting for that stuff to complete. And then once those end products are produced, we'll be selling them. So I think that we'll probably just add the manufacturing and industry stuff. We'll kind of tack it on to what we're kind of already doing in this series. That way I don't have to actually make an entirely other dedicated series that way as we kind of pivot on what we're actually making manufacturing wise you'll be able to see kind of how our mining kind of pivots along with it so that's been kind of what I've been thinking about in terms of how to handle doing the industry because really at the end of the day an entire series dedicated to industry would not they be very short videos they would essentially be hey this is what we're making and you watch me hit the start job button and then days later it would cut to days later of 
the item being done and then we would sell it we we would probably maybe maybe be able to get like five minute videos out of that which is something i'm trying to get away from i'm trying to get to into more like long form stuff in terms of this series and uh, live streaming in general i've also thought about um doing periodic episodes for solo mining as live streams actually live streaming a lot of that uh content but i do like having the 4k quality for this series and if i start live streaming the mining stuff and hope and want to incorporate that into this series it would be very jarring and it would kind of bother me ocd wise because you'd essentially have like a 4k video and then the next episode would be live streamed but then it'd be like 720p video at really bad bit rate because of how i have to live stream and then the next episode if it wasn't live stream would be 4k again so I'm still kind of working through what I kind of want to do with that. I think we'll still kind of keep the same format for this series. And then uh, periodically, probably um, two or three times a week, I will be either here on YouTube or on Twitch just doing some like bulk mining with uh, the Orca like this or um, just some stuff where I can sit down for several hours and not necessarily worry about commentary, commentating the entire thing which can be kind of exhausting sometimes, especially if you're just trying to do uh, volume. When, you're just, when I'm just trying to get out here and just get a lot of rocks, then I might turn on a live stream for that and then use those as kind of QA or um, talking with the community and, and kind of answering questions and things like that. So I think, um, yeah, keep an eye on the, the Twitch channel. Um, and also just here on YouTube, I'm not sure. I'm I'm not sure which uh, platform I would uh, I would do the uh, the Eve mining live stream on. It kind uh, kind of just really depends. I think uh, Twitch is easier, just to kind of like spontaneously kind of like get a live stream up and running. YouTube's back end for live streaming is very. Um, you have if you want to do it right, you're already making the thumbnail. You're making the tags you're doing all the things you do with the normal video for that live stream before you even go live whereas twitch is just like add a title and hit stream and worry about everything else after the fact which is uh kind of aligns more to like how i want to produce that kind of content i've been doing a lot of um diablo 4 streaming or not a lot but i've done like three diablo 4 streams there so on twitch I'm just trying to uh, kind of get back into the whole live streaming kind of situation. Now I think that'd be a good separation too. Is like Twitch is be like all the the low quality essentially live streams, and then YouTube um, essentially would be all the the 4K kind of uh, purpose built videos and informational stuff. I think that structure is kind of something that I'm really interested in pursuing I'm thinking about it quite a lot today I might actually end up trying to do a mining stream uh, sometime tomorrow on Twitch so if if you haven't already try to go over to the Twitch channel hit follow do what you got to turn on notifications um, but most likely I'm kind of leaning towards Twitch being the, the live stream platform so if you're looking for um, future Eve live streams that are just kind of chill and kind of more or less just like mining, just chatting kind of situation. That's where that'll be happening. And as far as time of day and schedule, I'm not quite sure. Uh, it's very kind of um, up in the air with what I'm allowed to do at what times of day. But uh, hopefully I'll have something concrete after a few weeks of testing and kind of getting a routine going. And I'll try to get a schedule kind of in place there that's more reliable than just randomness let's talk about alts a little bit here um more specifically mining alts if you're looking to get kind of like your own mining fleet started and you want to start training alts i generally try to start off at a pretty slow pace it's very difficult to just kind of like make a few tunes get them queued up put omega on them and then just you know and play that waiting game for them to eventually be paying for themselves i try to add 
one alt at a time. When it, back when I was building my mining alts, I would add one alt at a time. So I'd have my main tune uh, and just get that guy trained up into Orca. And then the first step would be to kind of doing this would be like Orca drone mining while uh, while I was getting funds or <clears throat> while I was waiting for the first alt to kind of do a lot of what it can do as an alpha uh, free training essentially. Then once that alt, you get to that point where that first alt is able to get its first omega, you put it in like a mining barge, you start bringing it out with your orca pilot. That alt then at that point starts kind of like, you know, paying its own way essentially. And a lot of people would make the mistake of like getting to that point with that alt and then starting another one immediately. Which I don't really advise. You can start them all at the same time. You can have them all be doing their alpha training. But I would definitely just take one alt at a time into the Omega space and get them to the point where they're essentially maxed out Exumer, maxed out like Hulk pilot, and they're going out all the time with your main and mining boosted with an Orca or a Porpoise and get them really well rounded, get their drone skills nicely trained out, get their targeting skills nicely trained out their tank stuff work on their shield and all their mining support skills because once you start adding more and more alts and now you're juggling uh different alts that have different you know target management type skills or they all have um their different levels of of drone because like if you're in null you'll be using a lot of your alts drones to help take down battleships it's just a lot easier to <clears throat> kind of do one at a time because once that alt is in Omega and it's max Exumer and it's really kind of pulling the most it can uh, out there with your command ship and it's you know able to justify its existence based on its own contributions to your bottom line, then it makes a lot more sense to then you know bring that next tune into the Omega space. That is personally just how I've done it in the past. I would run a while with just like one mining alt with the orca and then eventually after some time add the second alt and then the third alt and that kind of went on for a while up to the point where I had like seven hulk alts in kind of like I would say the heyday of my mining and then um, <clears throat> those guys so a lot of those alts have been uh, decommissioned um, a lot of those uh, alts have had their SP kind of sucked out. We still have essentially four alts that could technically be tacked on with a Orca, which I think is a good number. But I've been trying, like as you know from this series, I've been trying to spread them out uh, uh, across different parts of space and giving them different tasks to do. But I still like to maintain like the two Hulk Orca kind of fleet. I think that's a really good middle ground. So you're going to do really well with two Hulks and an Orca. When you start adding more than two alts, then it just becomes more for you to manage. And it can be uh, very mentally exhausting. Uh, so if you want my advice on like where you should just kind of stop with a solo mining uh, fleet or crew I would say command ship plus two alts that is kind of the sweet spot let's go ahead and get another target set up here we're getting quite a bit of score right now but like I said when I'm drone mining I really don't bother with kind of cherry picking I kind of just grab whatever's in range because I just need it all but a lot of the stuff we get out of score right is going to come out of moon mining. That pyrite, we're going to get a lot of pyrite from moon mining. So, Scordite is, as far as priority, definitely on the lower end of the spectrum in terms of what is needed a whole lot for time on the high sec side. We will be doing some high sec moon mining here pretty soon, so probably the next episode will be showing off some moon mining here in high sec so that will be fun i'll be talking quite a bit about moon mining and all that normally i would take probably an orca out there and i might still 
take an orca out there just to maybe do some drone mining on those rocks and maybe boost like a Mackinac or something. I'm not really sure, but at the very least, we will get out there with the Mac with some Tech 2 uh, strip mods and some crystals and get some of that moon goo because when we start doing invention, when we start wanting to do like Tech 2 manufacturing, we're going to want some of that stuff as well. We'll be using basically the same strategy we do with like rare ores and stuff like that. We'll be mining that stuff out there, compressing it locally, and then eventually hauling it back to stockpile it once we have a good amount of that stuff. Slowly, slowly starting to fill up. We don't really have to worry about compressing too much uh, right now. We'll probably add like another, maybe another 90,000 cubic meters, then I'll hit the compress button. But yeah, it's uh, pretty chill so far. Not a whole lot of activity in the system either, which is always nice. No pirate strongholds, no crazy gang fleets. That allows us to just relax and do as much mining as possible with these drones. So far, this is uh, shaping up to be a pretty chill day for some relaxing uh, drone mining with the Orca. But I think we're going to leave the episode off at this point. I will probably do another hour or two out here with this and then I'll be getting ready to do some moon mining and working on that stuff. So look for that in the next day or so. But thank you for watching. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. If you're enjoying the series and the channel and you want to contribute to future content, consider becoming a member where you get member badge, channel recognition, and all that. And like always, I will see you in the next one. Peace out.